This week's edition of NJBIA's Minding Your Business is brought to you in part by AT&T, helping family, friends, and neighbors connect in meaningful ways every day. From the first phone call 140 years ago to mobile video streaming today, AT&T innovates to improve lives. And by New Jersey Business Magazine, providing the critical information needs for New Jersey's business community for more than 65 years. Welcome to NJBIA's Minding Your Business. I'm your host, Bob Considine. Well, NJBIA recently held a press conference with business owners and business leaders to discuss the hiring challenges confronting New Jersey employers this summer. We take you now to the Red's Lobster Pot in Point Pleasant Beach to hear what the business community had to say about these hiring challenges. Let's take a look. Up and down the Jersey Shore, tourism businesses are desperate for workers. Seasonal, year-round, part-time, full-time, restaurants, amusements, hotels, fishing boats, campgrounds, municipal lifeguard stations, grocery stores, fish markets, retailers, linen service station, uh, companies, museums, wholesale delivery companies, banks. Basically, every single business that directly or indirectly is involved in your vacation is understaffed and overworked and the problem is only getting worse every day with students and teachers working summer jobs preparing to return to sports teams and the classrooms beginning in August. In 2021, our businesses have been forced to cut hours, close portions of their operations, and some just shut down unexpectedly, disappointing our loyal customers who save all year long for their one trip to the shore. Businesses predict losing yet another 20 to 30 percent of their staff by mid-August as those students and teachers leave to return to the classroom and the field, right in the middle of the busiest month of New Jersey's $22.3 billion shore tourism economy. One business owner I spoke with told me his staff is already down 129 employees and this ad additional anticipated shortage will mean closing dining rooms and cutting hours of operation. A motel owner told me with tears in her eyes that she had lost her only maid, which meant cleaning the rooms and doing the laundry herself. As we look towards the fall months and our, fall, our festivals, our beverage tourism economy, our museums, our cultural sites. We need our tourism workers back on the job. So let's encourage them to return and use New Jersey's tourism economy to fuel our total economy of the state. Um, Maurice Piers is located in Wildwood, New Jersey. We have three amusement piers and two water parks along with four restaurants. Um, our sister uh, company, Maury Resorts, has four hotels and one restaurant. All of our businesses are struggling this year. All of our businesses are understaffed this year. All of our businesses see our full-time employees not just doing their job, but working additional hours and doing frontline staff positions in order to try to service our guests as best as possible in 2021. Sure, businesses are used to the struggle of staffing. Our local population doesn't support the summer swell that we see. However, that said, 2021 is like no year we've ever experienced. Uh, we've existed more than 50 years and we've never struggled to find staff like we have this year. We have rides closed, we have services reduced, we have reduced hours on our facilities, all so we can try to staff for a shorter period of day and provide the guest experience that our visitors have come to expect um, and demand. Our maximum employment this year is about 20% of our 2019 numbers. Right now we're hovering at about 70%, I'm sorry, 70% of our 2019 numbers. So we're 30% down currently. And this is while we're trying to heal economically from the impacts of COVID last season. Each and every day, we are drinking from the fire hose, trying our best to provide the services our visitors expect, trying the best to provide the employment that our teammates and colleagues want, and to provide an experience that is a must repeat for both our guests and our employees. And the struggle is very, very real this year. 
seasonal businesses have a very, very short window to make their revenues that they need to sustain them for the entire year. I, in my free time, I like to scuba dive. So, and uh, several of us do around the office, and we've compared this sort of to filling your oxygen tank. We have three or four short months to fill our tank, and that air has to last us and continue to keep our full-time employees with a job for the you know eight and nine months of the off season. So we have three or four months in in order to sustain a year-round employment opportunity for 150 of, of our colleagues. And August is our busiest month, and we are actually dreading it. We are losing staff daily due to college, um, returning to band camp, sports camp. Um, we, are, we love to employ teens. We love to be a first job for many. In fact, I started there when I was 14. It was my first job ever. So I'm uh, very much in tune with our teen workforce and what it can provide and offer. However, they have other commitments. They have other obligations and they have school. We were not able to rely on the summer work travel international exchange students this year as we've done in the past because that program was impacted by embassy US Embassy operations overseas so while we have some it's not our traditional numbers those are the students who get us through the end of August into Labor Day when we have our Americans going back to school so we are dealing with um, probably another 25% reduction in our workforce before Labor Day coupled with the 30% we currently have and the results are going to be very real revenue impact. We are forecasting potentially 30% less revenue in August than a typical year. And for a seasonal business, when August is their busiest month, that is devastating. That is a very real impact. That will stunt our growth. That will stunt our ability to keep year-round people employed. That will stunt our ability to offer um, capital improvements and, and new offerings to our guests. So I am Ferlanda Fox Nixon and I'm the Chief of Policy and Government Affairs of the African American Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey. While we are all here today to sound the alarm of New Jersey's hiring crisis, I want to remind everyone that the unemployment rate for blacks still remains the highest in the state, notwithstanding the labor shortage. Since the African American Chamber is dedicated to economically empowering and sustaining the black community by being a critical source of information and resources, we can help bridge the gap. We invite employers to avail themselves of our media platforms to reach the more than 10,000 contacts in our email address database the more than 2,000 listeners of our radio show, The Empowerment Hour, and the more than 29 million viewers of our television show, Pathway to, to Success. Send us your job postings, and we will spread the word to our constituents. We all know that information shared by a trusted source yields plenty. So all job postings should be mailed to Nicole Baptiste, She's our Director of Membership Relations and Special Projects, and her email is nbaptiste at aaccnj.com. The restaurant industry has gotten it. We were hit hard from COVID. Now we're in the stage of that hiring. It's people are leaving. Um, we, we need help. It's... The struggle is real, as everybody else has said. It's not just our industry, it's every industry. There's a lot of aspects that go into the restaurant industry. We have our bussers, your servers, your back of the house, your front of the house. We, as, we're just not getting to people. I put an ad out the other day, I got zero responses. And that's on two different platforms. So um, I'm just encouraging the, you know, the governor and everybody else to help out I mean from from our hotels for our restaurants for our uh, you know every industry across the board just get us let's you know we're, we're struggling to get through the summer and it, it's it's not fair our taxes aren't going down our payroll taxes aren't going down nothing everything's monotone except the help that we can get to basically support the businesses which support the town um, our hours have been changed we're opening later, closing earlier to lessen the staff because we just don't have it. So I'm just encouraging uh, the people out there that if you can work, 
please work, uh, part-time, full-time, anytime? Uh, I'm one of the owners of Colonial Bakery in Lavalette, and I know that my business is not the only business that has been highly impacted on the Barrier Island due to staffing shortages. Uh, many restaurants in the area have reduced their hours, they have reduced their days. Uh, we are struggling right now just to get through the next couple weeks, and after that, I would estimate about 40% of our front of house staff is going to leave to go back to college, to go back to sports camps. Um, so the last two weeks of August that are usually a struggle for us is even more of a struggle this year due to already being short staffed now. Uh, my family also owns Muller's Bakery in Bayhead. They recently made the decision to close Wednesdays. My family has owned this business for 18 years and in those 18 years, They've never been closed a day in the summer. Summer is their busiest season. It's the most important season to get through the rest of the year. Um, but they just don't have enough staff to be open seven days a week. They have put out uh, applications on their website, on many platforms. They're adver advertising really everywhere, and they're getting zero applications. So they offer not only paid vacation, they have in retirement benefits, they have 100% health care coverage, as well as competitive pay. So it's not that we're not paying enough, which a lot of business owners are being told that if you pay more, you'll get the workers. These are amazing benefits and literally not one application. So it's not that we're not paying enough, it's not that we're, we don't have the benefits, it's that people aren't applying. They're not trying to get out to work. This year we're celebrating our 40th year in business. I have never seen such great opportunity for us to expand and grow, along with so much lack of resources to respond. Our customers are waiting. Uh, if you have a dishwasher that's not working, you're probably gonna wait about two weeks for one of our technicians to get out there because we don't have enough technicians. If you're looking to buy new appliances, they're far and few between. I've got people sitting here uh, with orders from, well, let's call it last December, waiting for pieces to come in. And that's just representative of the supply chain and how it breaks down when we don't have our workers. Yesterday, yesterday I was out cutting boxes instead of being the administrator to my company. I have to say that sadly in my experience I've heard people and they just give me the honest truth Corinne why would I return to work when I'm receiving more money to stay home and that's the sad truth and I can't fault them or blame them for that I do try to explain to them that work is sustainable where UI benefits are not and they're banking on the fact that there will be jobs there for them when they do choose to return to the workforce so that's very difficult for us to to compete with this crisis pure and simple is about getting anyone to apply for a job period for example pre-COVID a budget of $500 on Indeed would yield about 20 applicants. Right now with a budget of $1,500, I'm lucky to see one applicant. In childcare, our restrictions on grouping increase our staff by 20% in an economy where we're having such a difficult time finding staff. As a result, most childcare centers have limited slots available, which stops parents from returning to the workforce. We're on limited hours, which as well stops parents from returning to the workforce. We have had to close classrooms down last minute, calling parents and letting them know that they will not be able to drop their child off at work, uh, at school that day, so that they can return to work, which also puts their job at jeopardy. Um, and this is not just for my center, this is many centers across the board. People who apply for jobs do not show up for interviews. Even less time do they show up for their start date. And as other people have said today, we do invest time and money in orientating these staff. Those that do show up for work, are expected to be paid to pretty much stand around and not perform to the high standards that we expect in childcare today. People with zero skills, zero experience, and without a degree are applying for entry level positions and expecting much higher wages than our assistant staff who have been there with their experience. We are asking people to please return to work. We need you. Working in childcare is one of the most rewarding fields you can work in. At the end of each day, you will know that without a shadow of a doubt, you have made a difference to that child and that family. We are also a huge contributing factor in our state's economy. Without childcare, parents cannot return to the workforce. 
I spoke with a colleague this morning who has 60 families on her waiting list because she does not have enough staff to have those families. If those families cannot work, they cannot pay their taxes. We approximated that the New Jersey taxable income is losing $6 million just on the 60 slots that she has available in her center. We are asking Governor Murphy to please support New Jersey businesses and encouraging workers that are able to work to return to the workforce and remind people that UI benefit rules will be enforced if you are available for work and refuse to work without a legitimate reason to do so. We are asking our legislators to support New Jersey businesses by getting behind employer tax credits for those who are offering cash incentives. If the government wants to support workers, it should be done in a results-based manner. I believe hired workers should receive a federal subsidy when they receive gainful employment, as well as bonus bonuses as they continue along the way. The government would be spending the same amount of money as it is now in aid, but rewarding individuals who are working as opposed to those who choose not to, based, of course, on individual circumstances. I, would, I am also begging our legislature not to allow this to happen again. The damage has been done, and we need to move forward in a positive manner. And as was also said, we are here and we are looking. If you can work full-time, part-time, anytime, please. We need people to return to the workforce. Thank you. All right, you're watching NJBI's Hiring Crisis Press Conference. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. These days, it's anything but business as usual. That's why working together is more important than ever. AT&T is committed to keeping you connected so you can keep your patients cared for, your customers served, your students inspired, and your employees closer than ever. Our network is resilient. Our people are strong. Our job is to keep your business connected. It's what we've always done. It's what we'll always do. You were first. First to respond. First to put others' lives before your own. And in an emergency, you need a network that puts you first. That connects you to technology and each other. That's built with and for first responders. FirstNet. The only officially authorized wireless network for first responders. Because putting you first is our job. Welcome back to NJBI's Minding Your Business. I'm Bob Consoline. Well, we return you now to NJBI's Hiring Crisis Press Conference, where NJBI President and CEO Michelle Sikirka wraps up the concerns of New Jersey's business community. Take a look. I think you could, you could hear the passion and, and the pleas. Um, and we're not just here to complain, we're here to try to offer solution. And so I think, and I know that we all play an important role and if we come together, we can solve this problem, but we need to do it, as we said, right now. Our employers, our workforce, and our policymakers. So here's the message. To our workforce, we need you. A job is sustainable and unemployment is not. We want to remind traditional seasonal workers that they must clock 12 consecutive weeks in one season in order to be eligible for off-season unemployment insurance benefits. You still have time to do that. The Federal Unemployment Enhancement Program ends September 4. If you come back to now, you have the opportunity potentially to get those 12 weeks and receive then your unemployment in the off-season like you did in years past. Also, those receiving unemployment now can return to work for limited hours and not jeopardize your ability to continue to receive your UI benefits. There's still time. Even one more employee can greatly help a business, as you have heard to the workforce, visit the job posting boards that were discussed today, go online to your local one-stop career center who is working virtually to match employees with jobs. There are tens of thousands of open positions available today. We are partnering with 101.5, I see you here today, thank you very much. We're partnering with 101.5 on the 101.5 job fair. Go check out that virtual job fair. Tens of thousands of jobs are waiting for you. Take advantage of workforce development opportunities to build your skills. The jobs that are returning today in many cases are very different than the jobs that were left before and require a high degree of skills, which means you can achieve a higher pay scale. Pay scale. Higher skills means more money. The resources for workforce development are abundant and available through the one-stop career centers, your county community colleges, county vocational technical schools, and many trade schools across the state of New Jersey. Take advantage of these resources, and we believe there'll be Federal Rescue Act money to help to enhance this as well. A message to our employers. We hear you. We're here standing beside you. We want to work with you. 
post your open jobs on those reference job boards. Get on that 101.5 job fair and post your job there as well. Apply for an EDA grant loan, many of which can be used for payroll purposes, such as sign-on bonuses to incentivize a return to work. Let us know how you're tweaking your business model for sustainability in the future. We are gravely concerned that these jobs are not going to exist in the future. And who, does, who wants to lose our hospitality or our tourism? We don't. It's sacred to New Jersey. We need to do what we can in order to ensure sustainability of these jobs for the future, it's going to require all of us to put our heads together on what the business model of the future looks like. Finally, to our policymakers. We're thankful for the money that the governor and the legislature have made available to New Jersey business community over the past year, as well as some of the policies that, have ad that we have advocated for, such as the increase in teen worker hours that did in, in fact help, help to subsidize some of those missing hours from the missing workers. But we need more direct engagement and some particular actions that we ask. First, affirmatively communicate that available for work requirements will be enforced. An affirmative statement must be made on this point now. Just like President Biden did almost two months ago when he stood up and said to the American worker, if you are available for work, you must return to work. If you're available for work, you must return to work or UI benefits will be enforced. That message needs to be stated here in the state of New Jersey. Establish a more responsive process for employers to report violations. We know that some violations are being accounted for. However, we know many, many are not. We understand how overwhelmed the Department of Labor system is, but we absolutely need relief in this space. We have advocated for some Rescue Act money to take care of those antiquated systems so that this will never, ever happen again. It's critical to hold people accountable. And we need to avoid unemployment insurance fraud because that dries up the cost at the end. We've seen that happen in the past and that is unsustainable. So not only do we have a very significant you know, gap there now, if we continue to have these levels of unemployment in the future, the costs are just unsustainable. We need to fully open our one-stop career centers in person. Job seekers and employers need better access to reemployment and training support, not just online oversubscribed programs. They make the connections for reemployment and they're a critical tool for employers and employees in that workforce development that I talked about before. Remove remaining childcare license restrictions, as was explained by Corinne, relative to groupings that limit the amount of students that can be enrolled. This can and must be done. The child care centers practice all safety protocols, and we need our children back in the centers so our workers can get back to work. Consider a lump sum payment upfront for individuals returning to work now, as well as a retention payment for those currently working to remain through summer's end. And finally, provide tax credits to those businesses struggling to raise taxes in order uh, to wa raise wages in order to be competitive. We've heard of businesses raising their hourly pay. Good for them if they can manage it. But many of our small businesses can't, especially after a year of shutdowns and restrictions which have left them hanging on by a thread. Paying more for many of these businesses could mean dipping into their own personal savings, as we have seen time and time again, as well as we've seen the overstress on the owners who are the ones now going out and cutting the boxes, as a perfect example, or the owners who are now making the beds because they don't have their maid. This crisis is real. I know if we put our heads together, we can come up with some solutions. All right, quite an important gathering in Point Pleasant Beach for NJBI's hiring crisis press conference. Next up, we go to Kate Conroy to discuss all about NJBI's upcoming networking events. Kate joins us for her first Boots on the Ground segment with Vinny Civitillo. Have a look and a listen. Hey everybody, I'm Kate Conroy. And I'm Vinny Civitello. And while you're used to seeing us on our podcast, Other People's Business, that's not what's happening today. Today, in fact, I'm crashing Minding Your Business. I promise you she was invited. And she's asked me to join her on this new segment featuring her as our Boots on the Ground correspondent. For those of you who have watched or listened to the pod, you know that one of us is good, but both of us is better. It does, as the songs say, in fact, take two to make a thing go right. <laughs> so what do you got going on today? Two big things happening in September event. The first is uh, the Sales and Marketing Roundtable on September 21st, bringing in speaker Emily Vavra. She is an entrepreneur who built a nine-figure business from the ground up that currently has 142 thousand salespeople. Incredible. She's going to be giving a presentation called Master Being Memorable. The contents of the presentation will focus on why being memorable matters, how to turn memorability into money, how to use tools like social media purposefully for an ROI, and where does the marketing strategy end and the sales training begin. I am super excited. She actually, Emily, has been featured on Forbes, Good Morning America, Yahoo, Life and Style, ABC 10, Fox 32, and News Channel 8. This event is ideal for business owners and leaders, 
sales managers, sales professionals, and marketing professionals. I know that many, many, many of NJBIA's members have tons of sales and marketing people who are constantly looking for tips and tricks and opportunities to learn more. This is a great opportunity. Absolutely. The chairs of the Sales and Marketing Roundtable, Rachel Durkin of Paradigm Marketing and Design and Donna Miller of C3 Workplace are powerhouses. They continue to bring in speakers that are just outstanding. You definitely don't want to miss them. Tell me about them. Actually, you know one of the recent ones, oh. Carrie Barrett. Oh, I love Carrie Barrett. Everybody loves Carrie Barrett. She was a guest on our Other People's Business podcast. That's right. She was, and she was just one of the speakers at the Sales and Marketing Roundtable. She always talks about how to do video better, and she is so good at it. If you have not yet gotten in touch with Carrie, you definitely should. The other more recent uh, guest that Sales and Marketing Roundtable had was Jen Gottlieb. Does that name ring a bell? She was on VH1 a of while course. ago. Yeah, of course. So her company is Super Connector Media, and she teaches her clients how to use media to grow their businesses. Like if you are a small business and you have this amazing product or technique or technology and you think it should be on TV, but you just don't know how to get to the TV show, she teaches you how to do that. It's amazing. It totally is amazing. Speaking of these women, Rachel Darkin of Paradigm Marketing and Design has partnered with NJBIA on a weekly virtual networking called Table for Four. We have so many people looking for networking, they're hungry for connections, and the pandemic has really made that almost impossible. So we've got this virtual platform that we use. We get between, I don't know, 30 and 50 people to show up weekly, and then we go into two different breakout rooms. So you get to know between three and four additional people really deeply, really well, and then you can set up additional one-on-ones with them. Sounds great. If somebody wants to get involved in that, how can they do it? You should check out njbia.org backslash events. We just, in fact, we just have this new website. It's beautiful. You should just not even do the backslash events. You should just go to njbia.org and take in. Take it all in. The magnificence <laughs> that is our new website. And there will be a, like a link there to, to check out events. So you should do that after you've like really reveled in the beauty. The second thing that's happening in September that's a really big deal is actually our biggest event of the year. It is the New Jersey Women Business Leaders Forum powered by NJBIA. And when I say largest, it is the largest professional women's conference in the state. Two years ago when we were still live and in person, we had 700 women in the room. Unbelievable. And last year after we all pivoted and had to turn it virtual, we still had 500 women show up. Wow. It was incredible. So this year we have the chief diversity officer of Major League Baseball. Like, it's it's no slouching job. It's quite literally the big leagues. <laughs> Touche, Vinny. Michelle Meyership, the Chief Diversity Officer of Major League Baseball, is going to be one of our TED Style talkers. And four time Olympian, Joetta Clark Diggs, she is going to be another TED Talk. You might know her name. She is the daughter of the New Jersey principal, Joe Clark, who was the inspiration behind the movie Lean on Me. Morgan Freeman. Exactly right. Yes. Yeah. So he was impressive. She is just as, if not even more impressive. I cannot wait to hear what she has to say. Um, and then the biggest news is our keynote is Joanna Coles. I don't know if you know the name, but she is the former chief content officer of Hearst Magazines. Oh, okay. Yes. She's also one of the executive producers for The Bold Type, which is a show that just wrapped up its last season on Hulu. Amazing. It really is. So is this live, um, virtual? What are you doing? So it's a hybrid. I mentioned last year was virtual, unfortunately. This year, because we think that we can have a kickoff reception outside, we're going to be at the Palace at Somerset Park on September 22nd for a kickoff reception, champagne toast. We're going to have an awards ceremony. Monica Smith of Market Smith is going to be accepting the Karen Franzini Award from us. We're so excited for that. She's wonderful. If you have not heard of her, you need to Google her immediately. She's amazing. Um, and everybody who shows up to that event, the, the live kickoff portion gets a goodie bag with a bunch of really special gifts inside. The last few years, at least that we were in person, those were impressive, so I can't wait. They really were. One year, it was a set of Tiffany goblets. I mean... We still use them. We still... Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then, so that's the 22nd of September. That's Wednesday. And then the next day... Thursday, we start the virtual piece. So Thursday and Friday will be a good mix of virtual coaching, panels, keynotes, and the TED style talks. So again, this year is a hybrid, September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. 
All the tickets for that are available on njbia.org. And just to make it easy on everyone, we'll put the link right on the bottom of the screen. You're so awesome at that. Thank you. That's what I do. All right. See you next time, everybody. All right. Thank you, Kate Conroy and Vinny Civitillo, for your Boots on the Ground segment. And thank you all for joining us on NJBIS Money and Business. We will see you next time.